I'm responding this morning to a viewer comment or uh, question. He says that he has heard that the ellipse in the output of a uh, TV of a uh, tube output uh, stage is due to the reflected speaker impedance, not due to hysteresis or the transformer. And he's partly right. Hysteresis contributes to the nonlinearity, but the ellipse is caused by the inductive reactance in the plate. So then the question becomes, well, how much of that inductive reactance is due to the speaker and how much is due to the transformer? So the first thing I'm doing this morning is I'm taking an inductance measurement of a transformer. In this case, it's the transformer in this ICO signal tracer that you see there. I read 1.9 Henry's roughly. And that's with the secondary open. So that you'll know where I'm going here though, let me show you a page from Terman's Electronic and Radio Engineering. This is page 341 of the 1955 edition. And you'll find this in other books, the Radiotron Designer's Handbook and uh, Eastman's uh, Fundamentals of Vacuum Tubes and so on. It's, uh, it is probably the most widely used equivalent circuit of the uh, of an output transformer. Now, to give you an idea, RL is the load. And normally there's a little bit of capacitance associated with it. Uh, it's actually in the case of a, of a loudspeaker, it's pretty negligible. And in the case of a loudspeaker, it's not just a pure resistance, it's, it's actually an inductance itself or uh, an inductive reactance, which consists of a resistor in series with an inductor. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. The uh, L2 is the what is called the leakage inductance in the transformer. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And then R2 is considered to be the uh, the loss in the secondary, in other words, the resistance of the secondary, uh, the ohmic resistance of the secondary. A, a practical equivalent circuit is shown here in which he has moved L2 to the primary and multiplied by the square of the turns ratio. He also has multiplied the resistance of the secondary by the turns ratio, and he also has multiplied the resistance by the turns ratio, the square of the turns ratio. What that does is it moves all of these impedances into the primary. So here is the primary impedance. Here is the plate uh, or the amplification factor times the grid voltage. This is the plate resistance. This is the resistance of the uh, primary of the transformer. And this is the what I would call the residual uh, inductance. In other words, it's the inductance of the circuit that is that is not coupled into the secondary. Uh, leakage inductance is simply the inductance that is used as a model. It's a, it's a fiction. It's inserted because it allows us to accurately model the effects of the magnetic losses. I won't get into that very much more. If you're interested in that in more detail, look at my uh, Tom Tech Test 186 uh, video. It, it talks more about that. But what we are doing is we are going to be opening this circuit here and putting a, uh, a measurement at this point, measuring the primary of our transformer. And we're going to try to account for all of these issues. First, we're going to try to measure the primary inductance with the secondary open. And that gives us the value of LP. 
Then we're going to try to measure this, which is n squared times the, the leakage inductance, by shorting the output. Now, when you short the output, you don't really get zero ohms. You really get this resistor, because remember, this resistor is the ohmic resistance of this of the secondary, which gets multiplied by the square of the turns ratio when it's reflected into the primary. So let's do those measurements, that is, the primary inductance and then the leakage inductance. Then where we're going to go is we're going to hook up a pure resistor here and see how that changes the inductance of the prime in the primary, which is of course what the tube sees. And then we're finally going to hook up a speaker here and, and measure that uh, as well. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm opening the secondary I have a, a wire connected to the secondary, but as you can see, it's just laying open on the bench. So this is just the uh, inductance of the primary itself. And you notice we get about 1.9 Henry's. Now, what I'm going to do is short the secondary and we get about 43.35 let's call it 43 microhenries then I'm going to connect a resistor a 10 ohm resistor let me slide the resistance box over so you can see that I've got a, a 10 ohm resistor and I'm going to hook that to the secondary. And this would simulate the effect of a pure resistor. In other words, a, a perfect speaker, one that had no real inductance. It was perfectly flat and presented just an ohmic load. So now let's do the calculation or the measurement of the impedance. And you see we get 1.102 Henry's. Now, uh, the, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to connect a speaker and this is the same uh, speaker I've used in some previous uh, videos on this in this series and we're going to calculate or measure the impedance or the inductance sorry for the confusion and it comes out 1.022 Henry's. Now, uh, let me show you, uh, I don't know if you've been writing those down, but so here are some numbers that I wrote down earlier when I repeated these same measurements. I mainly wanted you to see them in real time so that you could see that while they vary a little bit, uh, they're basically consistent. The primary inductance is 1.92 Henry's and what we mean there is this inductance. The leakage inductance is 44 approximately uh, millihenries and what we mean by that is actually this inductance multiplied by n square. In other words you'd have to divide by n square to get the, the inductance the leakage inductance in the secondary but we're only interested in how much what the effect is in the primary. So n squared times L2 which is the leakage inductance is 44 uh, millihenries. The uh, I I remeasured using 4 mega ohms on the output, but disregard that, it's really unimportant. The, the more important one is that when I put a 10 ohm load on the uh, secondary, I measured 1.104 Henry. And that is the effect of, uh, that is what actually causes the ellipse. What happens is the the, the total impedance of the circuit is the vector sum of the inductive reactance and the resistance. And since the resistance is reflected, it's multiplied by the uh, square of the turns ratio. So the effective inductance with a 10 ohm load is 1.104 Henry's. The effective inductance with 
a speaker attached is 1.024 Henry's. And so the percentage effect, the difference between a, a pure 10 ohm resistor and a speaker, the difference is 0.08. That's just these two numbers, one subtracted from the other. And then if you divide by the 10 ohm uh, inductance, the which is 1.104, you see that the speaker was a little over 7%, caused about a 7% difference in the inductive uh, effect over a 10 ohm. The rest of this, in other words, about 92%, is due to the transformer. So in this particular case, the transformer is, is clearly the, the dominant uh, impedance or reactive component in the, the uh, plate circuit. There, this will change depending on the kind of speaker. In fact, the worse the speaker, the more influence it has on the reactance in the plate. And the worse the transformer, the more effect it has. So it's going to vary, of course, depending on the particular speaker and the particular transformer you're using. Now the one that I'm using, which is the one in this uh, signal tracer, is kind of an ordinary transformer. It's better than the transformer in most uh, All-American 5 radios. In fact, it's about the quality of a good 1930s push-pull uh, output stage, uh, a radio from the 1930s, when they, they were pretty good. But they certainly weren't hi-fi. So a hi-fi transformer is going to have a different kind of characteristic. So it'll be a lot better. But then, of course, so will hi-fi speakers. So basically what I've tried to do is to pick a transformer and a speaker that are in about the same class. Now what I'd like to do is take a look at essentially the same thing, but over a range of frequencies using the analog discovery impedance analyzer. So here is the setup that we're working with. On the left is the analog discovery, driving the transformer, the uh, one side of this push-pull transformer in the ICO signal tracer that you've seen before. This is the resistance box that you saw earlier uh, that produces a completely flat frequency response. And I have it set to 13 ohms because in a second I'm going to connect this speaker instead of the resistance box. But first let's look at what we see on the uh, waveforms display. That is the uh, the software for the analog discovery. Let me zoom in. And you notice there that this is, if you, in case you can't read it, the, the top line here is 20k ohm and this is 3k ohm. So it starts at about 3k ohm and this is the impedance of the speaker and this is the phase angle. So Keep that in mind, and what I'm going to do is, first I'll show you what I'm going to change. I'm going to simply disconnect the resistance box and connect the speaker like this. But I want to do that while you're looking at the waveforms display. So let me swing back over there, and pardon the... Uh, <laughs> motion inducing, motion sickness inducing pans there. Uh, okay, now I'm disconnecting the resistor, connecting the loudspeaker, and you may be able to hear it in the background. And and in a second I'm going to go back to the resistor. Now at the top, it has auto scaled a little bit, but the uh, this is still 20k up here. You notice it's virtually the same, but notice the phase. 
at the bottom. Now I'm going to go back to the resistor. There is that scan resistor. There is that scan. Now, I'm not saying that the speaker doesn't make a difference. In fact, it may even make uh, as much difference as the transformer or more, depending on the quality of the speaker or the quality of the transformer. But I have never found an occasion where the speaker was the only, uh, I've never, let me put it this way, I've never found a transformer good enough that the speaker contributed all of the reactive component to the output tube. So what I am uh, trying to show here is that first, if I confused people earlier by telling them, by talking about the ellipse, and I realized at one point I even called it a parabola, which it isn't. It's an ellipse. Uh, and hysteresis. Let me separate those two. The hysteresis contributes nonlinearities to the magnetic characteristics of a transformer. And those are reflected in the uh, load that the tube sees, which contributes to the sound of a tube amp. But the ellipse itself is due to the reactive component, which is basically the inductance that the tube sees. Now, of course, it also sees its own plate resistance, and it also sees the reflected resistive component. The combination of the resistive components and the inductive component are what are called impedance, and they are a vector sum that the tube sees, or I should say the tube operates into that load, which is partly resistive and partly reactive. And it's that combination that produces the ellipse. So I hope that this video has been helpful. If, uh, if you would like, and I encourage you to repeat your own measurements, your results will vary. You will not get the same figures I got. You won't even get the same relative percentages. If you put a really bad speaker with a really good transformer, you'll find that the speaker tends to be the largest component in the tube uh, load. On the other hand, if you put a real good speaker with that same transformer, you will find that the loudspeaker's impedance effect is somewhat reduced. But in either case, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If nothing else, maybe you've uh, learned, if you didn't already know, how to make these various measurements. You don't have to use an LCR meter. You can do this using just a, an oscilloscope and a function generator. This is just a convenient way to do it. Similarly, the impedance measurements using the analog discovery, you don't need the impedance analyzer. Uh, if you have an analog discovery or an analog discovery 2, you can do the same things. You just have to hook up some resistors, some external resistors. In other words, you have to make your own little impedance analyzer, but you can still make those measurements. In the final analysis, I hope this has provoked some thought, maybe some experimentation on your part, and that maybe you've learned something from this. At any rate, if it has stimulated you to go make some measurements in your own lab or dig out one of those old textbooks that I've talked about, uh, then I think it's uh, time well spent. At any rate, Look forward to some more stuff. I think I'm going to finally uh, close off this How Tube Amps, uh, What Makes Tube Amps Sound Different uh, series, but who knows what the future will hold. Stay safe and have a nice day.